Does intelligent alien life exist? Is it out there lurking somewhere in the cosmos? This question has puzzled both scientists and the general populace alike for many years, and many years to come. SETI, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, is the name for projects conducted to contact intelligent alien life in our galaxy. However, all attempts thus far have been unsuccessful. If the universe is so vast and ancient, why haven't we discovered any evidence to indicate that intelligent life exists? This question is the basis of the Fermi Paradox. The reality is, however, there are many factors that go against the possibility of intelligent life existing, let alone contacting us. The Drake Equation is an attempt to calculate the probability of contacting an alien civilization. N is the number of civilizations in our galaxy in which communication might be possible. Our star is the average rate of star formation in our galaxy. F sub P is the fraction of those stars that have planets. N sub E is the average number of planets that can potentially support life per star that has planets. F sub L is the fraction of the above that actually go on to develop life at some point. F sub I is the fraction of the above that actually go on to develop intelligent life. F sub C is the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable signs of their existence into space. L is the length of time such civilizations release detectable signals into space. There are problems with the equation, however. We don't know the value of many of the variables in the equation, so the probability can range anywhere from zero to billions. There is also a problem of congruency. Mathematics is often said to be the universal language, but how do we know this? We often attempt to communicate with alien civilizations with radio waves. If intelligent life can detect these radio messages, then it is assumed that they must know about mathematics. But that is a broad assumption. How do we know how aliens communicate? For example, on our own planet, many animals communicate through scent. That's a form of communication that we simply cannot understand. It's equally possible that an alien life form can communicate through some extrasensory perception that we cannot detect any more than they can detect our radio waves. But let's assume that they can detect radio waves. There still remains numerous problems. In 1974, a radio message was beamed at the globular star cluster M13, which lays 25,000 light years away from Earth. The message consisted of 1,679 binary digits. Take a look at it. Does this mean anything to you? No? How about now? Does anything stand out to you? Do you notice any patterns yet? Let's turn the ones into colors and make the zeros black. Now we have an image. This is the Arecibo message. Do you understand it? Perhaps this human at the center, but not much else. If the average human cannot understand this, how is an alien life form supposed to understand it? Not to mention, it would not be presented to them in this form. It would be in that jumbled binary code that is completely meaningless even to us. Of course, this message not only assumes that aliens can receive radio waves, but they have the ability to see. Incidentally, part of the images is supposed to represent our solar system with nine planets. Today, we say our solar system only has eight. The lifespan of an intelligent civilization is perhaps the greatest limiting factor. If we venture out into space, we will discover apes or angels but no men. This is a famous observation made by the science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke. Consider the history of Homo sapiens. We have inhabited this planet for approximately 200,000 to 300,000 years. Our non-sapiens ancestors existed for a few million years, and then there was a large prehistory of life forms that inhabited this planet for billions of years. Now consider that human civilization existed for only a few thousand years, and advanced civilization has existed far less. Our time on this planet is minuscule compared to the 4.5 billion year old age of the planet and the 3.5 billion year old age of life on this planet. In 1945, the nuclear weapon was detonated, and since then we have come close to nuclear war several times. How much longer will we last? One could argue that the scenario is true for any intelligent life form. That perhaps intelligent life cannot last 
and is destined to destroy itself. Therefore, if we were to explore space, we might find apes, the ancestors to what might become intelligent life. Angels, the remnants of a once great intelligent civilization that has long gone extinct, but no men. However, this is, of course, not a foregone conclusion, and the possibilities remain open for debate. Measuring how advanced a civilization is according to their technology is almost impossible. We cannot predict what kind of technology an alien civilization might have any more than we can predict what they will look like. However, the Soviet-Russian astronomer Nikolai Kardeshev thought of an ingenious method of ranking how advanced a civilization might be according to how much energy they have at their disposal. Kardeshev noticed that as humanity progressed technologically throughout time, the energy that we have utilized increased. An alien civilization would also need energy as well. Thus, the Kardeshev scale was born. Kardeshev outlined three distinct civilizations. A type 1 civilization would be able to harness all of the power available on the planet they inhabit. This equates to approximately 10 E16 to 10 E17 watts of power at their disposal. A type 1 civilization can possibly be attained through a combination of fusion power, dry rock geothermal energy which taps into the energy contained inside of a planet, and solar rays placed outside of a planet's atmosphere. Physicist and futurist Dr. Michio Kaku suggested that a type 1 civilization would have enough energy at their disposal to control the weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, and build cities on their oceans. All planetary control would be at their disposal. A type 2 civilization would be able to harness all of the power available from a single star. This equates to approximately 4 E26 watts of power. Physicist and mathematician Freeman Dyson suggested that a civilization could tap into their sun's energy by constructing clouds of asteroid-sized space habitats, which form a giant sphere around their star. Such an object is often referred to as a Dyson sphere. The most popular variation is a solid sphere which encapsulates the star completely and taps into 100% of the star's energy output. It is thought that if such objects existed, it should alter the light emitted from the star system in a unique way and identify type 2 civilizations to us. A type 3 civilization would be able to harness all of the power available from an entire galaxy. Roughly 4 E37 watts of power would be available in a type 3 civilization. Perhaps such a civilization dumps stellar mass into their local supermassive black hole thought to be located at the center of most galaxies. Black holes are one of the few methods that can efficiently turn mass into energy. Perhaps quasars are ancient artifacts of a once great type 3 civilization. Originally, the scale did not include incremental civilizations, but Carl Sagan was able to extrapolate a relatively simple formula to derive intermediate values. In 1973, he calculated that we were at a type 0.7 civilization. Consider the vast difference between us and a type 3 civilization. It would be comparable to the difference between us and amoebas. Such a realization could have far-reaching implications. If we were to stumble upon a type 3 civilization, we could be arbitrarily annihilated. Not necessarily because they hate us, but mostly because they simply would not value our existence. Consider how we treat other life forms on our own planet. Wiping out microscopic organisms means nothing to us as long as it's in our best interest. Even worse is how we treat life forms that are even closely related to us. Humans routinely slaughter other great apes, such as chimpanzees, for medical research, even though they are extremely similar to us and extremely intelligent. Even worse, these life forms possess absolutely no threat to us. If it was in the best interest to an alien civilization to wipe us out for any reason, they would not hesitate to do so.